As for Health Canada and the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, the only people who need to specifically avoid this vaccine are those who've had anaphylaxis to a prior dose, as this is a two-dose vaccine, or those who are known to have allergy or anaphylaxis to one of the components of the vaccine. On review of the vaccine components, only one of them has actually been associated with allergies in the past, and that is the polyethylene glycol. The other ingredients have not been shown to cause allergies in the past. Specifically, the polyethylene glycol is actually found in a lot of common medications that you might encounter over the counter or in medications for stool softening or laxatives, especially in preparation for something like a colonoscopy or surgery. Those who have polyethylene glycol allergy are very rare to encounter. In addition, they have to avoid a lot of different over-the-counter and commonly available medications, so they're often well known to their allergists and are aware of this allergy. What's also important about this is what is not in this vaccine. So there are no common foods in this, so there's no egg or milk or other common food allergens. There are no specific antibiotics in it, so there's no penicillin or sulfur medications. In addition, there's no venom from any stinging insects. There's also a statement from the Canadian Society of Allergy and Chemical Immunology letting all allergy sufferers know that even if they have an allergic reaction or history of anaphylaxis to foods, medications, or venoms, they can still have this vaccination. So these are not concerns for the vaccination. Finally, there are some populations which were not specifically studied when it came to this new COVID-19 vaccine, and that is those who have some form of immunocompromise or those who are pregnant. It is not to say that we specifically know that there's anything wrong with this vaccine for these populations, but they were not specifically studied, so we cannot give you specific data on these populations. Generally, we are concerned if the vaccine was live as we try to avoid that in these populations, but this is not a live vaccine, so you cannot catch COVID-19 from this vaccine. As it stands, because we don't have specific studies, the current recommendations from Health Canada is to await further information and hopefully with the subsequent rollouts, we'll have more information on real world data for these populations. You should be aware that south of the border though, the CDC has indicated these special populations, those with immunocompromised or pregnant persons can proceed with the vaccination after having an in-depth discussion with risks and benefits with the administering physician. Please know that anyone receiving this vaccine still does provide informed consent after reviewing the risks and benefits of this vaccine.